How do you use indexes in Golang templates? You asked, here we go. We're gonna be using the index function, which is built in to the text slash template package. So if you go to the HDR dash function section, you're gonna see there's a bunch of different uh, functions that we have here. For instance, we could use the length function inside of our templates and it's just gonna return the integer length of whatever slice or array we passed in. Now we're gonna be using the index function in particular for this one here. So taking a look at that one, it's going to return the result of indexing its first argument by the following argument. So looking at this here, of course, we're gonna have our brackets so it knows what to parse. It's going to use the index function. And like we said, the first argument is what's gonna be indexed. So that's gonna be our slice or our array. And the second one is gonna be our index. So it's just going to find the value at index five and then replace this chunk in our template with whatever that value is. Now, if we really want to, we can even work with nested array. So if we have the index function and then we have our array or our array, for instance, uh, at that array at the first index, we're going to find another array. And at that array, we can go to index two, which will find another array. And if we go to index three, we're going to return a value. And so we can have nested arrays as well. Looking at our code here, we're going to go ahead and declare a variable called or initiate a variable called G short for groceries. And it's just going to be of type string with all of our groceries in it, our milk, eggs, green beans, etc. Later on in our code, we're going to have our handler, uh, use our templates variable and execute the, or use the execute template method, uh, pass in the response writer, the name of our, our parse template and of course our slice. Now, if we go to that template file, our index.html, uh, we're gonna of course have our brackets so it knows what to parse. We're gonna use our index function. And like we said, our first value here is gonna be this passed in slice of string. It's gonna be our grocery list. And at index three, it's gonna go ahead and find that value, replace all of this right here with that value, and we get cheese. So looking at our code, now we're still, we're going to parse our templates like we, we always do, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at this code a little bit later. So, uh, we declare our variable G, which is of type slice string. Now we don't make sure that our handler down here, which is going to use variable G has access to it. So we put it here so that it's within the scope of our handler. Now we're going to go ahead and assign our, our values for a G and then at path, uh, root. Uh, index handler is just going to go ahead and handle that. So again, our template variable is going to run the execute template method. i uh, pass in our response writer, the name of our template index.html, and finally our slice of string, our grocery list. Looking at that, we have uh, our bracketed spot here where it's going to go ahead and parse. Uh, we have our index function, which is our built-in function in the text slash template old uh, package, uh, it's going to go ahead and take our slice and we're tell it what index it's going to use. So let's go ahead and run this and let's go to page here. Okay. So fourth item in our list, which is index three, remember that we start counting at zero, not one, and it's going to be cheese. Uh, first item in our list is always going to be you know, at index zero, which happens to be milk. And the last item is broccoli. So if we wanted to change one of these, say we wanted the fourth item, we can easily do that. And we go back to our browser and there we go. Now we're pulling flour instead and change that back. And let's go ahead and take a look at how we uh, get the last item here. So for this one, we're going to create our own function called last item, and it's only going to take one, uh, one argument, which is going to be our slice of string. So you might be asking, Hey, we had that length, uh, built in function we could use. Why can't we use that? And then just minus one to find our index. Well, we don't have minus one as one of our options. We'd have to create another function anyway to do that. They don't want you doing a whole lot of, uh, math inside of these 
uh, inside these templates anyway. So the mo they want to keep these things blazing fast. So anyway, let's take a look at main.go and we're going to use this dot funks method, which is going to attach this funk map. And that's how we're going to get access to this function that we've created. So a lot of things are going on here. So template.new is going to run. It's going to return a pointer to template.template data type, which gives us access to this funks method. And that's going to return a also a pointer to template.template, .template, which gives us access to this method, parse files, which will parse our files. So let's take a closer look at that. Okay. So like we said, template.new is going to return a pointer to template.template. .template. Uh, and this is just going to allocate a new HTML template with the given name. And we're just giving the name uh, my template. So like we said, it's going to return this uh, pointer to template.template, .template, which has access to this funks, me funks uh, method. So it's kind of like this is fallen off and then that one's fallen off and then eventually this one. So uh, template.template, .template, so we get access to the funks method. And as we take a look at it, funks adds the element of the argument map to the templates function map. So our argument map, so we're passing in this template.funk map. That's, you know, this is our argument. We look at our, our open parenthesis and close parenthesis. So this is all just our first argument uh, for this funks method. And it takes a of type template.funk map. So inside this funk map, we only have one uh, function mapped. So on this map, it is of type slice for the key. It is a string and then it takes our function. Now, if we look at funk map of that type, um, yeah, it takes a string as our key. Any is actually an empty interface, but it is ex expecting a function. So make sure you pass in a function for that second, for that, you know, that value to that key value pair. We could always add more of these. It should we want to. So we're going to run the method funks. It's going to return of type pointer to template.template. .template, and that gives us access to the method dot parse file. So if you want to take a look at some of those, um, you know, of type template, uh, temp, you know, inside the templates package type template, uh, gives us access to a whole bunch of different methods, a whole bunch of different tools we can use. Anyway, we're and parse files is going to go ahead and parse all the files that we pass in. So we have index.html and we, of course we could just add more of those should we want to. Um, and then finally, um, we're just going to take that, that template that we've had that we've, uh, you know, we created, we've added that funk map to, and then parse files to, and we're just going to assign that to our variable TPL. So, uh, if we want to add it, more of them, yeah, we could easily do that. Uh, anyway, I hope the video was, uh, helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is my first time using the camera. So, uh, if you know a lot about uh, video, please help me out. Uh, give me some advice here. Uh, can't change something if I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you in the next one and, uh, have a good one later.